please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or max scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 mathematics questionnaire for the specialized training scholarships. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 3. On the plane XY, there is the straight line A, and the graph of the curve B, Y equals X cubed minus 3X squared plus 6 plus 1, as shown in the lower figure. The straight line A is the tangent to the curve B that passes through the point 1, 2. Points A, B, and C are the intersections of the curve B and the X axis. Point D is the point of tangency of the straight line A and the curve B. Point E is the intersection of the straight line A and the curve B. Find the coordinates of the points A, B, C, D, and E. Just from the drawing and from the problem, we immediately see some answers for some of the blanks. For example, here we have A, B, and C which are the intersection with the, with the x-axis. Therefore, their y component must be 0. So, we can just write 0, 0, 0 here. That's the y-coordinates. It's on the x-axis. And also for d, d is the point of tangency, and at the same time, it is also on the y-axis here. And therefore, its x-component must be 0. And so, we write that there. Let us now think about how to solve A, B, and C in here. We know that A, B, and C are the intersections with the x-axis. And if that is the case, that means that they make y 0. If you look at that, and that is what we also have there. And so, we know that we can have the following. 0 equals this. And at the same time, we also know that because there are three intersections, there are three factors of this polynomial. And those factors, let's call them x minus r, x minus s, and x minus t. Again, the reason for the three factors is that the curve intersects the x-axis at three points. And also, we can see that from the exponent of x here. So the degree of this polynomial is 3. That means it has 3 factors. And now, the first thing that we can do is actually try some values. Let's say, what about x equals r equals 1? Does this make this equation 0? So if we replace this with 1 here, does it give us 0? Because if it gives us 0, that means that 1 here could be a value here, here, or here. And in this case, Let's say that's, that's here in R. And clearly, if we replace that, we actually get 0. And therefore, we can say that R could be 1, and x minus R, this bit here, which is x minus 1, is in fact a factor of this expression. Now that we have R, we just need to find S and T. And the way we do that is we divide both sides because x minus r times x minus s times x minus t equals this. Now we can divide both sides by x minus r. And so on this side, we will be left with this. And on this side, we get this. And we replace r with its value, which is 1. And now we can do the long division here. And when we do that, what we obtain is the following. So if you do the division there, long division, you get this. That means the factors of this expression are x minus s and x minus t. So we need to factor this expression. And the way we do the factoring is we set this to 0 and use the quadratic formula. Because if we set this to 0, we see that each of the factors actually gives you the value that sets the whole product to 0. So yes, we need to set this to 0 and find x. So now we just need to apply the quadratic formula. 
and this is the quadratic formula and what we did here if we will just review very briefly the this coefficient of the second term of the x term here this goes here and here and this constant term goes here and the coefficient of the first term the x squared term goes here and here and the four the, the minus four here and the minus sign here the plus minus here and the two here they are all fixed in the quadratic formula and so if you simplify this you get this so four plus four is just eight so that becomes two square root of two and now the twos here can cancel and now we get two values one plus square root of two and one minus square root of two and that's very nice because each of them corresponds to s and t now we have r s and t and actually the values of s and t are interchangeable because we got them from the quadratic formula and the quadratic formula doesn't really care about the plus and the minus it just says that it's there and now the way we assign s r and t to a b and c is by ordering them because we notice that a is the smallest c is the largest so let's order these three values and we see that s is the smallest and t the largest and r the middle therefore we have the following a is s b is r and c is t Next up, we're going to look for D, so this missing coordinate here. Let's call that missing number lowercase d. Now we know that D is contained in this curve, and therefore it will satisfy this equation. If we replace the x's here with 0 and the y here with D, we should get an equation. So let's do that. So here we did the replacement y is replaced with d x is replaced with zero and we see that that's that gives us d equals one which we just wrote here and now we're left with only this letter e and before we do that and while we are at this value of d let us actually try to find the equation of line a so line a the general equation of a line is y equals mx plus b where m is the slope and b is the intersection with the y-axis and we already know the intersection with the y-axis and that is d here and that is one and so we can replace the b here with one again for any line b is the intersection with the y-axis now we just need to find m now we know that m being a tangent d being the tangent point or point of tangency between the curve and the line we know that m is the derivative of this curve at this very point y or rather d so let's differentiate y and then replace it with replace the variables with the coordinates of d so let's do that so here we get m to be the de derivative of the curve y with respect to x evaluated at x equals 0 because d here has x equals 0 so we replace the x's with 0 now let's do dy dx first that's pretty simple 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 and now we just replace the x's with 0 0 0 so we get 1 and therefore m equals 1 and again m is the slope of your line and therefore your line is actually, if you replace this with 1, you get a line that is y equals x plus 1. And that is the equation of your line A. So finally, now we can find the coordinates of E. First, let us set those unknowns to be u and v. So u and v. Now, E is contained in the curve B. And therefore it should satisfy this equation so let us replace the y's here with the v and the x's with u and this is what we get now e is also part of this equation line a and the equation of line a is this 
So we can replace the y's here with, with v and the x's with u. And this is what we get. So we now have two equations and two unknowns, this equation and this equation. And let us remember that we're looking for u and v. We have v, u, v, u. So we have to solve these two equations. So again, we let E equals U and V, and these were the equations that we got from the previous slide. So if we continue solving them, what we can do now is actually replace this V here with a U plus one from here. So let's do that. So it becomes like, it becomes like this, U plus one equals whatever is on the right. And we notice that we can subtract U plus one from both sides. So U plus one, so we subtract U, we subtract 1 and we are left with this and we can factor out u squared and now we know how to solve this the solutions to this are the following u equals 0 and u equals 3 right but u equals 0 is already this bit here therefore e must be u equals 3 so u must be equal to 3 and that's why we replace e here with with 3 and now that we have u we use this equation and we replace u with 3 and therefore we get a v which is equal to 4 if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications see ya